This is how to fake the Wigglegram effect with video footage. If you're coming from TikTok, hello, I thought I'd just make this a uh, slightly more in-depth video going on to this, going into this effect because uh, it's quite a lot to delve into and um, it was a lot to condense into 60 seconds. So we'll start from the start, we'll go all the way through. Um, I've got this shot that I used in the TikTok here and it's perfect for this because the camera moves in a nice manner but this guy is just static, he's a, he's, a, he's a statue. So all we have to do first is just pick a few frames. So I'm gonna pick this one and just export a frame here. So I'm gonna um, just call it one, two, and voila. So after that, we head to Photoshop. So once we're in Photoshop, you can see I've got my four layers here, um, four different frames. Uh, we'll start by duplicating this first layer, this first frame. Uh, I did that by Control J. Um, and then it's easily just select subject and Photoshop does a pretty damn good job pretty much every time. So there are a few changes we should make to this. Um, and the way to do this really is select selected mask. And now this is very powerful and there's many tools here where you can uh, refine the selection quite a lot. So um, this tool here is just like a normal paintbrush, pretty straightforward. And then up here, um, the hair is a lot finer. So using this sort of tool is not really the best idea. So we can use um, the refine edge brush tool. And this does, you know, essentially the same thing, but you can just drag it along the edges of things. And um, you can see it tries to select like sort of in between your edges. It's good for hair is what I'm saying. Uh, let me just fill in this gap a little bit more as well. Once you're fairly happy with the selection, um, just press OK and you have to do it three more times after that. So it's, you know, luckily it's pretty quick. You, you could use the pen tool and go all the way around, but because you've got to do this four times, I thought using the automatic selection is fine. So once you've got the selection here, just click this button down here and it creates a mask. Um, as you can see, if I turn these off, we now have just the subject. So now we save this as a PNG. Um, let me just call this one, 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 as a PNG. There we go. So now we'll just do the exact same process with these. So now we're back in Premiere with everything we need. So you've got your original four screenshots that you took from the video. So let's throw these in. Yeah, just make sure each frame only plays for two frames. So that's one, two, and then let's just align them like so and then drag your PNGs. So now we have our PNGs aligned with the original footage. Great. Next, we need to select the third frame and drag it to the end and then the second after that. So now if we loop this, make sure it's looped here, we can see it plays all the way through and then plays backwards. So it's an infinite loop rather than starting from the first frame again. That's most of it. That's most of it. With a lot of footage, with, with some shots, you could just do this, throw on some film burns and grains and you're done. But uh, because we've spent the time to extract him from the background, we have wiggle room with being kind of creative with the background and the subject. So let's throw in an adjustment layer and drag that beneath the subject and go into Lumetri Color and we can just, you know, bring down um, the brightness. And then on the subject, I added another Lumetri Color and I boosted the exposure and the contrast. But then the effect, which I thought did a decent enough job, was actually called Lighting Effects. Under light one, switch this from a spotlight to an omni. And you can see it's quite bright. So let's lower the intensity. And I'm gonna lower the radius as well. Let's see how big this is. Does it tell me? Here. And then drop shadow. We want a bit of distance because this shadow needs to look like it's against, it's hitting the wall behind him. Let's rotate the direction. So somewhere here. And we're gonna animate this shadow to move as the camera moves. So we'll start it slightly to 
his, uh, well, the right shoulder, increase the softness to, and the opacity just ever so slightly. Okay, so now we need to copy this, and I'm just gonna paste it onto the other three. Drop shadow everything as well. So now we'll go back into the drop shadow on the first one. I'm gonna slightly change the direction to be even further right. And then on the third one, push it slightly left, just slightly. And then on the fourth one, a little bit even more left. So now um, what I'm actually gonna do is delete these ones and duplicate them again with the effects. So now we're in this position. Um, really, all that's left to do is apply as many overlays as you like. Uh, if you look at some of the reference Nishika shots, um, some of the some of them have a pretty strong film burn on them. I will throw on this film burn that I got from Cinepax, which is um, personally, like undoubtedly the best source for free and paid overlays, textures, assets, anything you might need. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees and put on the blending mode screen. So now you can see it plays throughout every time. Now the grain as well. Okay, so now we have our film grain and the film burn. So final step really is to give it a bit of, bit of, bit of color. Good way of doing this is we'll create another adjustment layer above, above the subject and the background. So I use my own presets, my eight millimeter presets that you can download for free from my website. I'll put the link down below. Have an experiment with these if you do download them and you can see how they're done. They're just, they're just literally lumetri color curves. Um, that looks a bit funky. Okay, yeah, there we are. And that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Um, I'll see you soon.